Okay, hi guys. First of all, I need to say that I'm sorry that I'm late again. Step on the wrist. Um, it's just been crazy. Um, I'm not going to make excuses. I'm sorry I'm late. I am 12 weeks and two days today, and I'm just so relieved to be 12 weeks. Um, it feels like the first major milestone. It always makes me feel a little bit safer, I suppose. I know things can happen after 12 weeks, but um, I think all the risks are lowered once you reach 12 weeks. So, oh, I just feel like a breath of fresh air. I feel like I can start to relax a little bit, maybe. Um, and of course, we have our scan on Friday. So in two days, we have our 12-week scan. And I just can't wait, because that's the first time that we will see this baby actually looking like a little baby on the screen and oh I'm, I'm nervous I mean there's always a possibility that something's wrong um, but I listen to the heartbeat every day multiple times a day so I'm pretty sure that everything's okay um, but I think it's just natural to be nervous isn't it so happy excited but nervous it's at half past nine in the morning so as soon as I get time to you know, like take a picture and upload it to my Facebook page, I will, so I can show you all before my next update, even though it won't be that long before my next update. Um, so, yes, it's second trimester, so I finally highlighted my hair, so I feel kind of um, back to me a bit. That sounds stupid, but i have gone so long without highlighting my hair, I felt so dull, and like I'm just used to being really blonde, and I just felt dull and blah. So yes, I've highlighted my hair, I... I know that you can highlight it in the first trimester, um, but and that they, you know, they've stopped using all the harsh chemicals and the dyes and stuff. But I just knew if anything happened, I would blame on that. So I decided to wait, and I did it on Monday when I was 12 weeks, and I feel so much better now. <laughs> um, as for symptoms, as you can probably tell, I feel fine. I feel perfect. I just feel like I don't know. I feel like I didn't know I was pregnant with Izzy. I don't feel pregnant. Pretty much just don't feel pregnant. I'm energetic. I'm. I don't feel sick. Uh, yeah, I just. I just feel like me, really. Apart from getting a bump, I just feel like me. Um, I do saying that I'm energetic. I do feel energetic during the day, but at night time and in the mornings, I am tired. Um, and if I do anything like any exercise or if I go shopping around town or I'm cleaning, I get tired really quickly. Um. And I notice that if I do too much, I start to get cramps. So that's when I know that I need to just stop and sit down. Um, I was going to clean today. You can see it's messy as usual. Um, it's always messy with kids, but I've been cleaning and it's only two o'clock and I've already had, I think, yeah, two breaks. So cleaning takes a lot longer than it used to, um, but I'm just determined not to do too much. I don't want to put my body under too much stress. I say that all my symptoms have gone. I'm still having a couple of food aversions, um, mainly eggs. In fact, I think it, yeah, eggs and ravioli because Izzy loves both of those. And I just, if she has that, I just cannot feed her because, oh, I just, it's not even that it makes me feel sick anymore. It's just the whole, I just don't like the smell or the idea of it or anything. So I try to get someone else to feed her when she has that. Um, my appetite's completely back. Like I said, I'm not feeling sick, so I'm eating better and I'm eating more. Um, and I think that in turn, eating more is making me feel less sick and giving me more energy. So it's just all evened out and just got to a point where it's a nice, nice medium and everything's good. I said a few weeks ago that I was having um, persistent headaches and I've always suffered from headaches. For as long as I can remember, I've had headaches and migraines and well. Uh, but um, I had an eye test on Monday, actually, and I found some really interesting stuff out. I've had loads of eye tests over the years. Um, I've been to neurologists because of my headaches, and I've had MR MRI scans and CT scans. The lot, I've been through all the tests. He sent me to the opticians to just check that it wasn't something simple, and the opticians found nothing. So... I was expecting to have nothing, for them to find nothing on Monday, but they did, and they found that although my eyes look straight when I'm looking at you, um, they're actually off center, so that I'm, I'm, my eyes are always straining to focus, and they're always straining to straighten out, 
And that's what's giving me the headaches. It's just something really, really simple. It's only like a tiny, tiny bit off center. So I'm really annoyed that the opticians didn't find that out years ago. But that's kind of off topic. But at least, you know, that's going to be one less symptom. I thought the headaches were to do with pregnancy, but it's not. It's to do with my eyes. So, yes, I'm getting my glasses tomorrow. So in my next update, I may well look very different. And I think I'm going to feel quite self-conscious wearing glasses because you look completely different. It's like being a completely different person. So yes, I might be a bit shy in my next update. My cravings this week have been all the same really. I just want to eat raw meat all the time. I'm not obviously. Um, I just have the odd steak and that seems to sort of like curve my appetite. Well, curve my craving a bit I suppose. Um, but I'm also really liking tuna at the moment. And although you can eat tuna while you're pregnant, you're not meant to eat more than, I think it's four tins a week. So I'm really having to limit that, and it's annoying that I'm craving everything that I either can't have or have to limit. But I don't know whether I'm just growing a rebellious baby, whether it's just me, you know, just I know that I can't have it, so I want it, that kind of thing, I don't know. And the only other thing I've noticed, especially this week, is that I can eat apples again. I've always loved apples, but they're just always made me feel sick. I'll eat the apple and then like five minutes later I just feel sick for hours. So I've always kind of kept away from apples and now I can just eat them and I feel great. So I'm enjoying eating apples while I can. <laughs> um, this week I have made some purchases. Um, I will show you the baby purchases soon. Although this is the one I want to show you first. This is called Derma Mum and it's stretch mark cream. And I wanted to show you this in case any of you watching this hate creams that smell, especially when you have morning sickness or, I mean, when you're pregnant, your sense of smell goes through the roof anyway. I hate things that smell. So this is perfect. It just has no scent. And it's really, really good. It's got rose hip, evening primrose, um, wheat germ, and cocoa butters in. But it doesn't smell like any of those. There was a really nice, um, well, there was this cream that's meant to be really good and it just smells like cocoa butter and I just, it just made me feel ill in the shop. So I just didn't buy that one. But yeah, I've been using this on my hips, my bum, my boobs, my belly, just basically that whole sort of torso area. Um, I was lucky enough to not get stretch marks on my belly with Izzy, but I did get them really badly on my boobs and my bum. And I really just don't want those to come back. I'm really scared that as my boobs start to grow, which they are by the way, that's another thing I've noticed this week, my boobs are starting to fill out, they just feel bigger and I'm sort of popping out my bra, so I need to go bra shopping soon as well. <coughs> but yeah, I'm just scared that well, when they get bigger, and obviously my hips will get bigger and everything again, um, I'm just worried that my stretch marks are going to re-tear and then turn into really, really mega nasty stretch marks. So I'm using this religiously every morning, every night and really massaging it in. So fingers crossed that will just keep them all at bay and I won't have any more stretch marks this time. Please. Something really exciting has started to happen. I think, I'm not sure about this, um, so I know some, some of you might not believe me, you might think it's too early, but I swear I am starting to feel movements. I'm 12 weeks and two days and I know that with Izzy, the first time I felt movement was at about 16 weeks, and that seems like quite a common time for your first pregnancy to feel to feel movements. Um, I've been asking some of the ladies on my group um, when they've started to feel movements the second time round in their second pregnancies, and quite a few of them have said anything between 11 weeks to 13 weeks. So I think the second time round, you do feel them a lot earlier. And it's not really a movement that you would ever notice before unless you knew exactly what it felt like. And it's not gas. <laughs> Andy keeps saying, oh my god, it's just gas. You know, you can't be moving yet. It's far too early. I know what gas feels like. And this is not gas. It's in a completely different place. And it's a completely different sensation. It's kind of like a pop, um, like a, a bubble just popping. It's so faint. Like I said, you, you wouldn't ever notice it unless you had it before so yes I think I can feel the baby moving um I never really get it enough to just lie there and feel this baby though it always just happens so quickly and suddenly with no warning that I'm sort of like oh and then <laughs> did I really feel that or am I imagining it it's weird but I'm sure that as the weeks progress 
they will become more and more obvious until I get to the point where I'm positive that it is the movements. Um, and then the other morning, I woke up with a massive lump on my left side in my abdomen, like the, the lower abdomen. It was so weird. My bump was completely wonky. It was lying flat on my back. And I, it just felt strange. Like, I wasn't touching it or anything. It just felt weird. And uh, I looked down. It was just like a massive lump on the side. And I did take a picture of that on my phone. So I will upload that to my Facebook page. And I'll be leaving a link below. So go and like that page because I sometimes put pictures up there that I can't get into my videos and stuff. Um, but yeah, it's just weird. Like, it was just definitely the baby on the left side. They must have gotten into a really strange position or something. But it was just... It was so nice to just be able to see and feel them for the first time. Um, and it was nice for Andy as well because I suppose up until the point where they can feel them, it's not really real for them. It's just two lines on a test and then you moaning that you feel sick for weeks. So <laughs> it was nice for him to be able to feel that it's real and, you know, it's actually happening, I suppose. Uh, right, so baby buys this week. I have made a few purchases. Um, I don't ever buy anything until 12 weeks, so I've been a bit naughty <laughs> this time around. I suppose I just feel a bit more relaxed about the whole thing. Uh, but I, I wanted to buy this for ages. It's called a Woomby, if I can get that in focus. Woomby. Um, and I bought this from flunkymonkeypants.co.uk. Um, I'll try and remember to leave a link for them below as well. But they're great for cloth nappies and all things like natural. And basically this is like a swaddler. But it's tiny and it's organic cotton and it's got loads of stretch. So it's meant to help stop, well obviously it stops the startle reflex. And that's one of the main problems we've had with Izzy. She would sleep but that would always wake her up. Every five minutes she would drop off and uh, and she'd be awake and... I'd have to feed her again to sleep, and it was just a nightmare. So I'm, my thinking is that, fingers crossed, this will just keep the baby asleep for even just 10 minutes more would be fantastic. So, yes, I hope it works. It's tiny. I can't get over how small it is. Um, it's newborn size. They only do newborn size because, of course, you can't put a baby in this once they start to roll or even get close to rolling. It's just for real, real newborns. But, yeah, you can see it's lovely and stretchy. So... It's just like them being in your womb, really. So it's a nice sort of, it's a nice way to ease them into the transition of coming into the world because I always imagine that must be quite scary for them. We don't really think about how it is for the baby. We always think about it for ourselves, but it must be really scary. And I bought some cloth nappies, my first cloth nappies. These are the Totspots Bamboozles in their new rainbow colours. And I got size one. And they are so cute. They're so tiny. I just, I mean, I knew they'd be small, but they're just even smaller than I thought they would be. I mean, they're like, so my palm. <laughs> I got purple, red, and blue. Um, I just feel that they're all kind of unisex colours. And they'll get covered by a wrap anyway. And the wrap I got is a fair seas duo in size one in the backwards print, which is maybe a bit of a boyish print, but... Izzy had a nappy in this print and she looked great in it, so I thought whether it's boy or girl, they can pull this up. Um, I've gone for these because um, I wanted something that would keep the leaks in no matter what, because all of you that have breastfed your babies um, will know that their poo is incredible in the first few months. It's, as long as you're exclusively breastfeeding them, their poo is just like watery, runny poo, and it goes everywhere, up the back, up the front out the legs. Disposables are pretty useless for um, breastfed babies, so two pot system should be good because this will keep it in and then they've got a wrap as well and the wrap has double gussets. So hopefully that will cut down on all the washing I'll have to do with clothes and everything else. Um, I actually bought this a while ago. It's a Monkey Snuggles newborn, which is tiny. Um, I mean if I compare it to the, the bamboozles you can see that it's Actually, they look kind of the same size. They're not really. Maybe, they, maybe it just looks smaller to me. Um, but this has got the snap down for the umbilical cord. Um, and it's cute. It's in an L print. So, yeah, I bought that quite a while ago in a pre order. But they are my baby buys. First baby buys. I probably won't 
buy anything else now. Um, actually, I'm probably lying. I'll probably buy a few more cloth nappies. Um, but I'm going to try and hold off the clothes until I know the sex because I'd rather get like, well, not necessarily pink or blue because I'm not really, I don't really like just pink or blue, but I'd rather get clothes that are one gender or another rather than unisex. I don't really like unisex clothes. I think they're just a bit boring and dull, but that's just my opinion. Um, oh, out of breath, that's another symptom. Um, right, gosh, this video is long. Um, I just wanted to say quickly that we haven't mentioned names. Um, I haven't mentioned names in any of my videos really. I haven't let anyone know any names yet on here, but we do have some. For a boy, we've pretty much decided our name. Um, I'm not going to tell you which name we've decided, but I will tell you the names that we had on our list. Um, and two of the names on our list are actually the names of two ladies I know on YouTube, little boys. And I swear we're not copying you, it's just it's always been on our boy list, so <laughs> it's just weird. Um, first name was Toby, second name is Max, uh, third name is Oscar, fourth name is Leo, and did we have a fifth name? No. Toby, Max, Oscar, Leo. Yeah, so Toby, Max, Oscar, Leo. I'm not going to tell you which one it is, but we love all of those names so much, so it's been, it was really difficult to just choose the one that we like the most. Um, girls' names aren't going as well. <laughs> we can't decide, um, we can't agree on names, really. I want something... Uh, really unusual. And Andy is small plain. He likes simple names, and I really don't. So um, I'm gonna. We do have a list here. So I'm gonna tell you a few of the names on here. Um, some of them I sort of wrote down. I think I was having a bit of a mad day because I look back and I think, what the hell was I thinking? Um, <laughs> but anyway, um, we have Madison. Um, we will call the baby Maddie because we both like Maddie. But we don't necessarily like the name Madison, so I don't know if that's a good idea. <laughs> and I don't know if Maddie and Izzy, and then I get called Immy by my family. So I don't know if like it's a bit too many E's in the family. Yeah. Uh, this is a name that I love, and this would be my name choice. If it was down to me, I would call... If we were having a girl and it was down to me, this would be the name. I love the name Luna. Um, I just think it sounds so pretty, and although it's unusual, it's not weird. Um, but Andy's convinced that they'll call her Looney or something. And um, of course there's the Luna in Harry Potter and everyone calls her like Looney Lovegood. And yeah, but I love it. I really, really like it. But I don't think there's going to be any convincing Andy, so I'm trying to forget about that name. Uh, Fionn is a name that we both like. and It's probably one of Andy's favourites. Um, and it is up the top with me, but like I said, I love Luna more. Um, I'm just not sure if I like the spelling, really. I mean, I don't know if it looks strange, two Fs, but yeah, Theon, Theon Connell sounds nice. Andy's second name is Connell, um, which is quite an awkward surname to place names with. Um, so we, we're trying to keep away from names, girls' names beginning with C. Well, actually, any names beginning with C it just sounds strange. But um, yeah, Madison Connell sounds okay. Luna Connell sounds so nice, but he won't listen. Theon Connell. Okay, um, the next name on the list, I'm not really sure why we wrote it down, because we both don't really even like it now, was Cleo. It reminds me of a car and a cat, so that's going to have to get crossed off. The next name is Aria, um, but it looks like it could be pronounced a million ways. It's like it could be pronounced Aria, Aria. Yeah, I just think we should stay away from that just purely because I don't want to have to keep correcting people if they don't pronounce it right. Um, another name that we both really like is Isla, spelt I-S-L-A, and the only thing stopping me, it from being my favourite, is the fact that I'm scared people will call her Isla, because that's how it's written, you know, and I'm worried they'll pronounce it that way. I do like Isla Connell, and it's Scottish as well, and Connell's a Scottish name, so it would make sense. Um, then we have Sky. not really sure about that. Bonnie, Andy loves Bonnie, but I just think it sounds weird, I don't know, like not a real name, don't know why. Um, we have Violet and Everly. Um, Violet, Andy doesn't think it sounds like a name, um, I like it, and I like Vi as well. Everly, I'm not 
overly keen on anymore. But yeah, they're just a few of our girls' names. And as you can probably tell, we are completely undecided on girls' names. We can't agree. I don't even know where the names are set in my head yet. Um, all I can tell you is that I love Luna. Andy loves um, Isla. He loves Bonnie. And we love Theon. So it's probably going to be one of those. But if any of you have any kind of name suggestions for girls that sound kind of similar ideas to those but maybe a bit different, then feel free to comment below. Um, we like... Like I said, unusual names, you want something different, but not overly weird. Um, I, I really like kind of hippie names, but I've needed to tone them down a bit because Andy's just not into that kind of thing. Right, so I think that's everything, and I'll show you my 12-week belly. So again, apologies for the mess. Just ignore it. Um, this is with the top on. This isn't a maternity top. It's just really stretchy, but it's going to be a comfy. So yep, it's becoming quite obvious. I'm wearing the same jeans again because it's so comfy. I think I'm quite a lot bigger than last week. I feel bigger. I feel like I've suddenly popped out. Oh, baby. It's so hard now. Crazy hard. Um, I guess. Okay, so. That's everything, and I will see you on Monday, and I'll have my scan pictures with me and everything. So, yep, make sure you go and check out my Facebook page, because like I said, I'll be uploading some pictures to that. And, yes, I'll see you soon, guys. Bye.